How's it going guys? I'm back to another series on how to do optic-oriented programming using PHP code. Now, because this is the first episode in optic-oriented programming, I'm going to spend this episode explaining what exactly optic-oriented programming is, because it's very important that you guys understand what it is if you have never done anything with optic-oriented programming before. So if you're completely familiar with optic-oriented programming, you don't need to watch this episode. The reason I want to do a small episode on just explaining what exactly it is it's because I remember back when I was learning optic-oriented programming, you know, back when I was studying my bachelor's, um, the teacher had a specific way of explaining optic-oriented programming that didn't make sense to the entire class. So it's very important to me that I understand this in a way that you guys understand it and know exactly why we need to use optic-oriented PHP programming versus the other way we would do it in the past, okay? Now, when it comes to PHP programming, the way we've been doing it in my other series that's just called PHP, um, we use something called procedural programming. Now what that means is that when we have a website, such as just a regular website with a login system, we would just go ahead and create the PHP code and insert it inside the document whenever we needed to use it. Meaning that if I had a sign up form inside my website, I would just create the PHP code inside the HTML page or inside the PHP document uh, where I had the sign up form. Whereas in optic to PHP programming, we create separate documents only meant for PHP code that has something in it called classes. Now classes contain something called properties and methods that we use regarding one specific thing inside our website. Now, if that sounded confusing, it will sound confusing if you've never done anything with optic oriented PHP program before. So don't get scared that you don't understand what classes and properties and methods are. Just go ahead and follow the lessons and you will understand it in no time. So the basic idea here is that let's say we have this login system inside a website and I need to create the PHP code for this login system. Now what I can do instead of just creating the code where I need to use it inside my PHP document, I'm gonna go ahead and create a separate document that has a class, which is just a very big container to a lot of code that I use regarding login systems. So this class might be called login. Now inside this login class, we have properties and methods, which is another way of saying we have variables and functions that are saved inside this class. Now, don't get me wrong, properties and methods are not the same as variables and functions, but they work in a very similar way, okay? So inside this class regarding login systems, we have code that does something regarding the login system. And because we do it this way, if I were to do anything else inside the website, you know, in another page regarding a sign up form, I can reuse the code inside the class rather than creating the code again inside the website. Okay, so we can actually reuse code again and again and again, which is one of the benefits from using optic to PHP programming. Now, another benefit from optic to PHP programming is that when you, if you want to work at a marketing agency, you know, a place where they actually create websites for companies and that sort of thing, it's pretty much a standard today that you need to understand optic to PHP programming because OOP, which is what we call optic to PHP programming, is a format that all programmers understand. With procedural code, I have one way of coding it, another programmer has another way of coding it, meaning that we might not understand the code that each, you know, each person wrote. So optic to PHP programming kind of solves that problem because we need to understand what other people program when we have other people that we work with. Now you might be asking, well, is optic to PHP programming better than procedural programming? You know, we just create the code wherever we need to use it inside our document. Well, if the code is just meant for you to use and you just create the code for small applications, then no, it doesn't matter if you do optic to PHP programming or procedural programming, like a login system, I would say it's borderlining, you know, where you need to start considering using optic to PHP programming because now you're starting to create a larger application. But I just want to highlight that a lot of people, at least a lot of programmers, don't believe that optic to PHP programming is better than procedural. Some people think that do exactly the same thing where a person like me think that optic to PHP programming, if used right, can do a lot more beneficial things when it comes to larger applications. So if you're watching this series and thinking, well, optic to PHP programming sounds much too 
complicated or might be too difficult to learn versus what you're actually getting out of it, then you shouldn't look at it as a bad thing to just want to go with procedural programming. Just remember that if you want to work with this in the future, you're going to need to look into optic or into PHP programming. But it's really not that difficult to learn. I just want to empathize that because it really depends on who's explaining it to you. Now, another thing I want to mention regarding optic or into PHP programming, which is one thing that if you guys have actually been Googling it, looking for tutorials, is that when you go to different tutorial sites, optic or into PHP programming will be taught differently by pretty much everyone. And the reason for this is that we have different patterns in optic or into PHP programming. Now, what patterns means is that when you have optic or into PHP programming, you have a specific formula or a specific pattern that you create the code in, meaning that if I were to learn this from one website, uh, they might be using something called constructor patterns, where another tutorial series might not be using constructors, which is something that we will be talking about in this series here because constructors seem pretty important when it comes to having the proper format of optic learning to PHP programming, but it's different what people teach you when it comes to optic learning to PHP programming. So I just want to mention before you get started on this series that what we're going to be doing is we're going to go ahead and use what's called an MVC pattern, which stands for Model View Controller. And it's a pattern that was created quite a while back, which was used mainly for other types of programming languages, but has been incorporated into PHP when it comes to OOP programming, and we're going to go ahead and use in this series here. Now, in the next episode, I will be explaining what exactly an MVC model is, you know, model view controller, and why we need to do it this way, at least when it comes to my tutorial series here. In the future, we might be looking into other design patterns, but for now, in the beginning here, we're going to focus on the MVC pattern since it's pretty popular out there. So I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time.